Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. We're going to be singing for tonight and uh, we're going to start with Shine, Jesus, Shine. Please join us. The last song is going to be Be Thou My Vision. Please stand.
It's time now for special prayer time. So if you'll get with the person next to you, and I want you to pray about three things, all right? So the first thing I want you to pray about is a week of prayer coming up. And then I want you to pray about the ACT on Sunday. And then I want you to pray for our speakers tonight, the Ramoses, as they're on the couch. So uh, three things, the ACT, week of prayer, and the Ramoses as they speak tonight. So uh, we'll pray together, and then we'll close. Heavenly Father, we're excited that it's your Sabbath, and uh, we are excited about the rest uh, that we can have. I just pray that you'll be with us tonight as we listen to the Ramos to speak. Um, be with them and help them, uh, help them to know the words that you want them to say and the message that you want us to hear. Uh, be with this upcoming week of prayer. Help us to uh, have a spirit that is receptive uh, to what you're trying to do on this campus. And I also pray uh, that you'll be with the, the, the students taking the ACT this Sunday. Help them. Uh, as they as they work to uh, take the test in Jesus' name, I pray, man. Who hope in the Lord will 
like a flight upon an eagle's wings. He will give the weary strength. So lift your Hello, everyone. Oh, this is a nice couch. I know. It's like so comfy. Okay, so um, I guess we'll start by introducing ourselves, and, um, and then we, we are here to tell our story. We've never done this before, actually, so mm -hmm. probably a little bit nervous. Uh, so my name is Israel. I'm not from Israel. Um, but uh, my parents named me, Israel, by the way, was a person before it was a country. So I'm named after the patriarch, Jacob, who has his name changed to Israel. Okay, and my name is Judy, and I think I know a lot of you. I've been here before, and um, so, yeah. We're Manu and Micah and Ty's parents, and um, so, yeah. So we have an outline here um, about what we're going to talk about. Maybe we can go to, this is, uh, those are our initials, I plus J, okay, forever, yeah. All right, so l let's talk a little bit about growing up. Okay. Um, why don't you go first, and we have a picture of, to kind of, uh, okay. so we can do the next okay, slide. Okay, seriously, I just want to let you know, like, I've never seen these slides. I do not know what he pulled together, so, okay, yeah. Detroit. That's the prompt. Okay, so. I was born in Detroit. My parents immigrated to Detroit um, in the late 70s. And um, so I, but I was born in the US, me along with um, three of my siblings. Um, so yeah, we're, I was born in downtown Detroit, Hutzel Hospital. Just so you know, we got this picture from Pinterest. I don't know of what, what, that, uh, what that does for Facebook Live or whatever, but I don't know if this is illegal, but I had to do this today, so. Uh, th that's your house, Jude? Okay, yeah. And then um, we moved to Lathrop Village. So it's kind of like one of the suburbs of Detroit. So then my siblings and I grew up in the metro Detroit area and stayed there through through college. And so Michigan is my home. The, the house, Judy's house is the one in the middle. That's uh, thanks to Google Earth. All right, we can go to the next slide. This is me. I was born in uh, Los Angeles, East Los Angeles, California. Um, I was born into uh, uh, a Mexican home, a Mexican household. And, and this is a picture of, of 
of, of LA in the 1980s, which is when I was born. The Detroit picture that I put up there was from Detroit in the 1980s. It looks a lot different now. If we go to the next slide, this is where, uh, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to tell which is my house, but um, yeah. Is it an apartment? It was an apartment complex. You can see, um, you, you know where the, the row, the, there's a small road and the big road. The small road, the one lane or two lanes or whatever, uh, there are two buildings that are kind of bluish, and behind that, there's a red, some red building, a red building, and that is uh, the apartment where I lived for most of most of my time in LA. Um, and uh, yeah, I went to a, I went to a, to an Adventist school, White Memorial, in uh, in Los Angeles, um, until I was in fourth grade, and then we moved to Riverside, California, and uh, my parents bought their first home, a small ranch home and um, in order to make the house payment they we had to leave Adventist education and so I went to public school and uh, that's a different story what happened there but um, we really really thankful for Adventist education we go next slide okay so this is the motherland um, apparently <laughs> so yeah my parents um, so it's interesting when you're an immigrant kid because you know, like when your parents come over, it's like the culture is frozen in time from when, when your parents came. So I was raised like by parents who left Korea in the 1970s. And so, you know, Korea is like a lot different now, you know, but after, you know, my parents came, it, it's interesting how that works. So then you kind of end up growing up a little bit like a third culture kid because you can't really connect with Korea. You can't really, um, you know, you don't really quite fit in in the U.S., especially at that time. Um, there was, you know, it, it was kind of hard to be Asian, you know, in the 80s because there wasn't a lot of acceptance and there wasn't a lot of diversity. And so, yeah, I felt like I grew up kind of like really trying to assimilate to the culture. And so, and we'll talk a little bit about identity and, you know, as, as I grew older. But that kind, that's kind of a similar experience, I think, with a lot of immigrants. You come and you're trying to fit in. You don't know who you are. You're trying to find out who you are through your parents who are also discovering who they are now in this new place. So, The next slide is a picture of Mexico. So my, my dad comes. Yeah, I know the, the beer. I'm is, sorry. Yeah. I so apologize. We apologize for that to the administration. <laughs> Uh, but you know we we were short on time, so um, so th this is uh, my my parents come from um, two different states, two different cities. Uh, my dad comes from uh, central Mexico, and the the city is called Guadalajara, and uh, the state is the state of Jalisco. And my mom, this is where by the way, this is where the picture's from. Um, and so my mom comes from northern Mexico which is, uh, the city is called Monterrey, which is the, um, it means uh, the, I, I don't know if it means king of the mountains or just king mountain, mountain king, king mountain, something like that. And uh, that's northern Mexico. We have an Adventist university there uh, in, in northern Mexico, which is where my mom's from. Um, very similar experience growing up. Um, I remember, you know, uh, being being at home, my, or my aunts used to babysit me for, um, quite a bit of uh, my elementary school years, and I would tell them, you know, I'm not Mexican, I'm an American, and that would cause quite a bit of stir among my uh, family, and um, I, I, I grew up, I grew up not knowing who I was. You know, I was not really uh, American enough to be uh, American here in the U.S., and when I went to Mexico, everyone was like, oh, you're American in, Me in, in the U.S., everyone was like, oh, you're Mexican, so I I grew up trying to find my identity for quite a bit of time, I think all the way through high school. But uh, this is uh, Mexico, and then the other one was Korea in the, in the 1980s, which is when, when we were uh, born and growing up. All right, this is, now we get into, the, into how we met. Okay, so, um, so I attended the University of Michigan, and- We can go next slide, yeah. And um, so when I was growing up, so we're, you know, obviously the couch talk is about our relationship, right? So uh, my, my parents were very much like, focus on studies, don't get distracted by boys, and all these different things. Um, and so 
when I went to the university, oh, and then, and then on top of that, they would kind of like plant these little seeds, like you're gonna marry a nice Korean doctor, we're gonna find him, you know, somewhere, he's, he's out there. And so it's interesting because I think, um, you know, when I think about my parents' perspective and a lot of um, people, a lot of par Korean parents in that generation, you know, there was kind of like a lot of fear. You still feel like an outsider and you're, there's, so the kind of like the expectation is just do what's comfortable and what's comfortable is sticking within your own race and your own, you know, what like, like, you know, be as similar as possible and that will cause us uh, the, uh, the least amount of conflict. So anyway, I kind of grew up thinking, okay, I'm just waiting for this Korean guy to just appear out of thin air, I guess. Um, after I went to college, after like not being in any relationships like the whole time. And so anyway, that was kind of like my frame of mind. And then I went to Michigan and it's like really hard. So you have to study all the time. So I was very focused on my studies. Why don't you talk about the picture? <laughs> well, that picture was after we met. So I thought we were like, you know. <laughs> they don't know what, that though, the Judy. They don't know that. Why would you say that? They I don't, don't even know, know what this, honestly, I don't know where it's from. Yeah. I, I went through random pictures, and I just picked the ones that I thought. I know I was in college at yeah. that time. Yeah. And those are our friends. Yeah, those are our friends. <laughs> so that's how she looked. We All started right. a campus ministry there. We started a campus ministry. And, um, you know, do you guys know that the Michigan Conference is the only conference that has a department for public campus ministry? Um, it's very rare. So, you know, Israel, that's where he serves currently yeah. in the office. That's kind of how we met. So this is Judy and, uh, and our friends. We can go to the next slide. This is, why don't you tell us about that? Okay, we used to go to Camp Asable. Yeah, we, we used to go to Camp Asable for retreats, public campus ministry retreats. Oh, thank you. And um, so it was really, it was really awesome because, you know, especially for me, I've never attended Adventist school. So Camp Asable, I still knew about Camp Asable though because, um, we had these special retreats twice a year at camp for Adventists who were studying at public universities. So that's And as you can tell, some things, too. Some, some things never changed. Asabo still has the same furniture. Yeah, it's the exact same yeah. furniture. All right. Yeah. All right, we, sure. go to, we go to the next slide. Okay, this is me. This is me and my homies. So uh, this is me in college. Um, and... Uh, so the, 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 two, the two guys that I'm hugging are my uh, college roommates um, towards the end of my college went to Andrews. Uh, at, at Andrews, uh, Beachwood F44, any people that are from Andrews, that was my apartment. And then the, the guy on the other side, uh, he was my roommate when I went to Heartland College in Virginia. His name is uh, John Triplett. So that is, that's how we looked like in college. I had, I had hair. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. All right, this is, uh, this is actually, I like this picture because, um, do you remember this picture? Oh, yeah, we used to do, like, morning walks. Yeah, so. Is that me? Yeah. Okay. All right, Judy's with the Korean guy that she probably was supposed to marry but didn't. <laughs> um, That's not true. Yeah. But he, he, he ended up being a lawyer, so her parents wanted a doctor. Um, so, uh, so I, t I took a gap year, I took a gap year and I went, uh, I served as a missionary at the University of Michigan, which is where, uh, Judy was, um, studying, that was your freshman year, and, um, as part of, um, so, you know, in a very, very real way, I rescued her from heathenism because she was going to a public university, and we were losing her, but then I had to flirt to convert. So, you know, that's, that's, yeah, not, not, yeah, this is, this is not a recommended tactic. This is not a recommended tactic, but, you know, we all, we all do what we have to do. Um, by the way, I'm the one that's squatting with okay, the Okay, that's such bright lies. Blue. I just want to let yeah. you know I was like a faithful Seventh-day Adventist, yeah. okay? Yeah, she was. So we, we used to go on walks. <laughs> yeah. It's not a good story, though. It's not a good story. So uh, we used to go on, uh, so the guy, the Korean guy that is next to Judy, uh, he's the other missionary. There were, there was three of us, uh, but only two of us in the picture. And so we used to go on walks every Sunday. And um, that's kind of how we, that's actually kind of how we started getting to know each other a little bit during the walks. Yeah. You also played basketball with 
my brother, like my sibling, all my siblings, we all went to Michigan. And um, so that's kind of how we initially met. And then definitely like the first, um, my first impression of him was like, wow, he's so holy. And he's like 30 years old. Um, I thought he was like very old and holy. And so I was like 18 at the time. And then he was 19, but I literally thought he was 30. I was very mature for my age. Yeah. Can we go to the next slide? <clears throat> so, um, that is not me. That is my sister. Did you think that was me? No. Yeah. Yeah. Judy's <laughs> taking the picture. Uh, and my cousin. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, We're I put, all friends. I put that picture there because I like what I was wearing. <laughs> That's to be, to be very honest. But that night, <clears throat> that night we, um, that night we went out, uh, we went out uh, to play bowling. We went out bowling to play bowling. We went out to bowl. We went out to go bowling. We went out to go bowling. The verb is go. Yeah. We went out to go bowling. Um, and, uh, and then after, the, after we went bowling, we, uh, we played uh, football in the uh, Meyer parking lot. Yeah. And, um, and I discovered that uh, Judy had a good bowling game, much better than mine. Um, and that began our romantic relationship the beginnings in my mind. Oh my goodness, okay, what he said, like 50% of what he's saying is not true, so I don't know like if you're catching that it's a joke. In my mind, I said, in my mind. Okay, yeah. yeah, so we were just friends, we'd hang out a lot with like our whole group of friends, you know? <laughs> no, we were, we were totally just friends, yeah. That's what she thought. <laughs> No, but, and, and also for me, really, like, the expectation, like I told you, because, like, school, I was really focused on school, and then also in my mind, you know, you kind of have this idea of who, who you think you're going to end up with, or maybe you don't, but I did, and so I was just kind of waiting for that to, like, manifest at some point, so we had, like, a really tight-knit group of friends, we're all Adventists at the University of Michigan, we'd hang out, we'd study, we'd do Bible studies together, we went to, we started a church together on campus, and so we were all like really involved in ministry and like just hanging out and having fun. We all like sports too. Like I'm a big football um, player. So we would play football and whatever, basketball and everything. So we can go to the next slide. Okay, this is the, this. Okay. I, yeah. This is, yeah. That was we the pre dating to, we got, picture. Yeah, we now got we're, to the point. we okay. made it. All right. So this is the picture when we were dating. <laughs> As you can see, we're hanging out with a lot of people, okay? Um, <clears throat> we can go to the next slide, next picture. This is more pictures of us dating. All right, one more. Do we have one more? No, 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 let's go back. All right, yeah. We had a quick dating period. Um, so we, so we uh, do, I, do you want me to talk about how we started dating? So after, um, after, after my year as a missionary at the University of Michigan, Judy's freshman year in college, um, we, we went uh, coal pottering together, canvassing, uh, in Connecticut. And um, something, really, something really, she went with her sister and some other friends, and, and I was there as well. And something that really uh, struck me about Judy was the fact that she, the two two things. Number one is she was very, very hardworking, and then secondly, she was very uh, intelligent, very bright, and um, and and I saw that as she was working uh, for God, I was able to see that in her life, and 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 I learned a valuable lesson, and I think it's something I'd like to share with everybody. Uh, when you're when you're dating someone and you go out on dates or you see them at like specific points in time, you're kind of giving, you're putting your best foot forward, right? You're like, you want to you wanna come across as a good person, and so you watch what you're saying, you're, you, you know, you dress nice, and you have good conversations, but if you really want to know somebody, work with them, and you're able to see how they deal with rejection, how, you deal, how they deal with hardship, how they deal with 
uh, when they're tired, all of these different things, which they're important because if you marry them, you're not only going to get their best self, but you're also going to get them when they're tired, when they're grumpy, when they're working hard, when, you know, they're working under difficult circumstances. And um, it, was, uh, it was at that time during the summer that I realized that she was uh, someone very special. I think, like, um, for me, because I never... So, so Israel was actually my first boyfriend, and I was 18 years old, and, um, and I feel like I didn't really know like, quite what that looked like. Um, I feel like Israel, in many ways, had a very much more like, mature viewpoint of like, like dating. You know, you probably read like, all the child guidance and evidence. I told he was like, very spiritual from like, remember I told you? Since he was like 19, I thought he was 30 and very holy. And for me, I felt like I was just beginning my journey because um, I experienced conversion when I was in college. So, so I feel like I changed so much from the point when we actually did start dating when I was 18. We dated for four years. Um, and so I think throughout that time, like I mentioned before, the whole thing about finding who I am, like finding my identity. And so in my college years, it was, I, I, it was the first time I think I really embraced who I was as a Korean American, first of all. Um, there was like a Korean American club and you just like, they're like all these people who are like you and they know your food and they, they, we have similar like histories and our parents, you know, like, you know, you can just like kind of commiserate together but also understand each other. Um, but that was also the time where I really began studying God's word and I became serious about being an Adventist. Because when you're in a secular environment, it's like that's when you're really tested, right? It's like you don't even have to go to church, you don't have to... That you can do whatever you want 24 hours a day. There are no expectations in that. And that's when I decided I wanted to be an Adventist, like a Seventh-day Adventist. I studied the Bible, and I was like, this is it. This is the truth. Um, and then Israel's in the picture, too. So then it was kind of like all these different things kind of coming together, all these changes and transitions. And I feel like we started dating really young, but we went through a lot of I, – I feel like I shifted a lot and learned a lot. Um, and that's, and so I'm, I appreciate the fact that we did date for so long. I think sometimes when young people get together and they're really young, um, like, like transitions like that could, could even prematurely hurt your relationship, right? You could end up breaking up. Um, but I feel like for us, we were kind of able to work through all of the changes as I was discovering who I was, as he was continuing to d discover who he was. So when we started dating, I was 20 years old and you were 18. Um, and, um, and then we got married at, I was 24 when we got married and you were 22, mm -hmm. right? Um, so um, should we tell them how we started dating or? How, how you asked me to be your girlfriend in the cemetery? I guess. That one? I guess we are. All right, so. Guys, you guys have notepads? <laughs> All right. All right, write this down. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so we were, like I said, we were canvassing in Connecticut, and then we, we took a trip to uh, Vermont. And um, we, were going, we, were, we were out for a walk in the morning, and, um, and we were kind of trying to figure out, in my mind, uh, you know, I, I had known Judy for a year, and I wasn't sure if, um, if it was like I was waiting for the right time to ask her to be my girlfriend. And um, that, you know, sometimes that there, it, there's like a little bit of tension when you're kind of friends, but you know you like each other, but you haven't told each other that you like each other. And so, you know, you're kind of a little bit flirty and, and there's like mixed messages and that kind of thing. And so we were having a conversation about that, which was essentially kind of like a fight. Um, right? I know. I was kind of like, I think we need to talk because I'm like getting confused. Yeah. I, I was like, I think like what's going on? You know, I was very con like a very naive, but also like, like, wait a minute. You know, you're about to go back to California, right? Were you going to go to California? Yeah. And then I'm going back to Michigan in like two weeks. And I feel like we've been really like tight and close. But then it's like, what happens now? Yeah. Mexicans so always find a way, you know what I'm saying? For love. <laughs> And and so and so, what happened? We were walking, and then Judy's like, you know, what's going on, right? And um, and so 
when, when, she, when she asked me that, I, I was like, you know what? I have to ask her to be my girlfriend. And like I had this like romantic idea, like this is what I'm going to do. So we, we go to the cemetery. And um, he likes to walk in cemeteries because they're quiet. I was very creeped out, but I was trying to keep it to myself. I was like, dear God, please help me keep me safe. That's public school education. You know, they're afraid. <laughs> we knew the dead know not anything. Yeah. Amen. All right. All right. So, so, um, so we go to the cemetery, and, um, and, and you can see that, you know, across the, across the field, there are some tombstones that are, like, just by themselves, and there are others that have a partner next to them. And, um, and so each of those tombstones tells a story. You know, some of these people, they died old. They died, like, being in love with each other for a very, very long time. And I thought, man, that, that's what I want in my life. I want to be able to have a life full of love so that when I die, there will be another tombstone next to mine. That's so romantic. I'm waiting for the Oz. No? All right. Okay. So, so I gave her that speech, but she, she did not respond the way I thought she was going to respond. I know. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> So, so this is why canvassing is important, right? That was, that was just the pre-close, you know? And so I came around, I circled around again, and uh, she was essentially asking, how in the world are we going to make this work? I said, you know, we'll make it work. You made some promises. Made some promises. Uh, some of them I kept, some of them I've, I'm still yet to keep. Um, I told oh, her I was yeah. going to get buff. But I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I'm still working, still working okay, on that. Okay, that is a true fact. He did yeah. say that. I think, you yeah. know, like when you didn't know it's, what it's like. You know, it takes a lifetime. Yeah. It's hard. Some things are difficult. So, um, so yeah. So, anyway, we, we, we started dating. You know, that was kind of like the official. I look pretty buff in that picture. But, yeah. but there are a couple things we wanted to mention, actually, like while we were dating and before we move on to the marriage. She said yes after an hour and a half. I, yeah, like it was kind of like, I guess I was like, I guess we can try it, you know, but I was really like nervous. Yeah, it was terrible. But, you know, um, I think there were a few things that were at play for me. Like I was still finding out who I was. I still felt like, you know, like I don't know what my parents are going to think, you know, because I didn't have an open dialogue with my parents about this. So I knew I'd have, they knew who Israel was, but, you know, like I was like, what does dating mean? So we're like, oh, now we're dating. Like, I didn't really know what that meant. Um, but I think one of the first lessons that we've learned, that I learned early on, was just the importance of... Um, <laughs> just, the in, just the importance of learning how to protect a relationship before you get into one. And... Um, I think when you're young, I was, I was, I went to college when I was 17, so I was very young, so I was only 18, but I feel like the first thing you want to do is kind of tell all your friends everything, right? You want to tell your girlfriends, like, oh, this and this and this and this and this and this, and then you kind of end up, some, the, the danger there really is when you don't have, when you don't have the maturity and you're not focused and really trying to invest in the relationship is a danger of oversharing, um, and I think that um, that was kind of the, one of the things we had to determine early on, you know, like, okay, who are we going to be able to go to when we have challenges? Because if I go to my family or my friends, right, it just paints a bad picture of him and vice versa, you know? And so then your friends, sometimes when you f tell your friends, it's like they're on your side, you want that. But then when they turn on the person that you like and that you're dating, it can be very hurtful too because they're just like, well, they did that last time. And they're not really, on, they're not on like, the side of you as a team, they're just only on your side. And so we kind of had to navigate that and decide who's going to be our mentor couple um, that's neutral, that loves us both. So uh, to give a little bit of context, you know, we, we did go separate ways. We, we stayed together as a couple, but she was in Michigan. I lived in California. So we were long distance for about a year. And then when I moved to Michigan, I was at Andrews. She was in, I was in Berrien Springs. She was in Ann Arbor. So there's the distance factor that was that played a role in our context. We also come from two very different uh, um, cultural backgrounds. 
So that played a role in, in, um, in our relationship. So we had very good highs and we also had some challenging times. And when you have those challenging times, you know, blood is thicker than water. If you tell your family, oh yeah, you know, uh, I, I like this girl or I like this guy, but this and this and this and this and this, then they will develop their own picture of who that other person is. And so that's why we had to early on, as she said, we had to kind of avoid, we call it avoid gossip, but avoid oversharing with um, uh, our friends and our family members. We, and what we decided to do together, I don't know how we came up with these ideas, but um, we recognized that there would be conflict and we would need a neutral party someone that loved us both and we could share openly, like this is a challenge that I have with my girlfriend or with my boyfriend. And so we found a neutral party, someone that was older than us, that loved us both, that we had confidence in their advice, and they became kind of like a, a mentor for our relationship. So that's something that we thought we'd share. I think something else that we, we both acknowledged as well is we were both seeking God's will and we, we understood that we were young. And so something that... Um, mentors had shared with us as well as, you know, like, you know, it's clear God brought you together for this time, but you need to be open. You need to always keep things open. Like until you're married, you know, if you start seeing yellow flags, especially if you start seeing red flags, you know, it's, it's a good time for you to part ways and keep your, keep, keep things open. Sometimes I think um, young people can get so emotionally attached and then it just kind of in some ways, it's not really a waste, but it could potentially be a waste of many years of your life when you could have met other people. So I think that was, that was something we talked about a lot. Like, yeah, we're together, we're dating, but we need to always keep our eyes open, be very aware, in tune with, with the way that the Lord is leading. So, for example, I have my own personal calling from God. That was really clear. We weren't like, oh, we want to go to the same school. We have to do everything together. I think it's really important for us individually um, to, and for each of you to, to know what God wants you to do personally. So if he br takes you to the other side of the country, hey, it, you know, you need to say yes and do that. Um, and so we didn't really, we said, let's see how the Lord guides if he opens a door for Israel to come closer or not. You know, I feel like we were very objective in that because I felt also insecure. I was so young. I'm like, there's no way I'm like thinking I'm about to get married right now. You know. So there is like an element of you want to be committed, but you also want to be open to the Lord's leading. Um, we at, during our relationship, we both got called to a mission service in different countries. Um, and so there was a time when we had even a longer distance relationship and where we had no contact with each other just because we were focused on what we were doing. Um, but um, one thing that uh you have to also consider is that even though there's an openness to the Lord's leading, there's also that commitment to each other or to the relationship. And what, we, what I mean by that is you don't want to, when you're, when you're dating, you don't want to, it's not healthy to establish a habit of like breaking up after every fight or the, the relationship being in danger after every fight. Because you carry, remember that whatever foundation you build when you're dating, you carry it over into your marriage, Right. And so if you develop the habit of like, okay, we get in a fight, then we're going to break up. And then, oh, no, I'm sorry, well, let's get back together. And then you break up at your next fight. All of that carries over when you get married. And that's why we get used to uh, separating ourselves from each other rather than dealing with our issues. And so there was an openness to the Lord's leading in our lives, our finding our individual selves and calling. But there was also a commitment um, in where... It was my goal to let um, Judy know that I was committed to the relationship as well. I think also something else to note is that our levels of commitment were, I think, different throughout our dating. And that's okay, you know. So Israel, <laughs> Israel, like, really, like, loved me so much. I was kind of like, oh, my goodness, you don't even know me. But, you know, I felt like he was very, very, you know, and, and early on he would say things like, I just want you to know that. I'm going to marry you someday. And I would be like, oh, my goodness. Like, I would, like, panic, you know. You got to um, scare them into love. And, you know, <laughs> and he would always, like, every time we'd call on the phone, because we had to use a calling card, guys, you know, no cell phones. Be like, you know, we'd, it would be money. And um, he would just say, like, 
okay, will you marry me? And I'm like, oh my goodness, can you stop? Can you stop? You're like stressing me out. Like, no, 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 no. You know, I had to say no to him like a billion times. But it didn't mean I didn't care about him. I think he knew that. He never was hurt by that. But he just made it abundantly clear, like, you're the one. And if not, that's okay. He's like, I'm not pressuring you, but this is just, he had a one-track mind. And for me, I still had a lot of hesitation. Um, I wanted to do the Lord's will, but remember I told you, like, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, my parents have to be, like, fully supportive. And they knew, and they were like, okay, but it wasn't, like, full 100% gung-ho support. Um, And I tend to be, like, a people pleaser. And so... I had a lot of reservations, and so I think being able to draw out our time together, um, like, really helped me get to that place, and we were able to make it work. So I don't necessarily think both of you have to have, like, the same level of commitment if you're able to be patient with one another through that, and... um, And I think that's what what the relationship is for. That's what the dating relationship is for, is to figure out a way that you will come to the same place where you're ready to make the commitment to be with each other forever. We dated for four years. So we got married young, uh, but we had a pretty good, uh, a pretty good time of, um, of dating and getting to know each other. And as you can see here, this is we're dating, uh, and we are um, spending, we're, we're, we're usually with a group of people. We're, we're not trying to be... Uh, super exclusive to ourselves. We want to interact, follow the Lord's work. A lot of our dating relationship revolved around actual, actually revolved around ministry, mm-hmm. which is what we're doing here at the uh, University of Michigan. I think, I think something else, too, to note, the reason why we were, and maybe like to an extreme, I feel like sometimes, but we were so young when we were dating and we had such a tight knit group of friends that I think it's inevitable, like we were able to kind of sense that there are feelings of maybe jealousy, maybe like, you know, people feeling left out, like people being unsure, how are we going to hang out now if they're dating or, you know, and so we, we were very confident in our relationship with each other, but like we never even sat next to each other in church and stuff. Like we were very open, like we hang out with everybody. We don't want anyone to feel excluded, even though we knew that we, we loved each other, you know. And I feel like that is something that um, we kind of had that ministry mindset. Like we don't want anyone to feel like, oh, we can't hang out with them because they're gonna they're together and they're gonna whatever. So we were very very much like always had people hang with us. Even when we were married, we're like anybody. We 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 really wanted to make people feel comfortable about it. that was important to me um, and to Israel. We can go two more slides. Yep. All right, one more. Okay, this is us, 7 11 04. So we got married on July 11. Uh, I, yeah, July 11. I was about to say July 24. Uh, <laughs> July 11, 2004. We, we get free Slurpees every, every anniversary. For our anniversary, yeah. Um, that's how we roll. Yeah. I haven't gotten a free Slurpee yet, actually, in 20 years. We celebrate 20 years this, um, mm-hmm. this year. We're going to go to Aruba to celebrate. Um, and uh, I'm excited about that. Never been there before. Um, so should we talk? Why don't you tell us about uh, the uh, engagement? Yeah, we can talk about the engagement. We had kind of like a um, unique engagement. Well, we were in a position where I started teaching when I was 21, um, right after I graduated U of M, and um, we weren't sure. Like where We were just really being patient and saying, okay, when is a good time? for the Lord to tell us, like, it's time to get married or whatever. And um, and the year before that, actually, Israel got a call to work in Ann Arbor. And I remember the director at the time approached me and said, you know, I'm, we need a new program director for the program here. And I'm pray, I've been praying and praying. The, the name that keeps coming up is Israel, you know. And actually, the first thing I said was, like, please do not have him come here because of me, you know. Um, I was just, I wanted to be, like, so conscientious, like, I don't want, I don't know, I don't want it to hurt the ministry, like, I was the president of the student group at U of M at the time, and we were dating, Israel was in Varian Springs, um, but I was like, I only want you to invite him if you feel like it's, it's, you know, it's the, really the Lord's will, because um, I don't want our, our relationship to be even a distraction, you know, with, with everything going on. He's like, it keeps, his name keeps coming. So when he, Israel ended up 
um, getting hired by the Michigan Conference, we really saw that also as like a step. Like the Lord will really bring you together if you surrender everything to him, you know? So we were literally working our first jobs together in the same city. Um, we never even asked for it. It would, These jobs presented themselves even to us. And that's when we really started considering, okay, maybe this is the Lord. Like, you know, I had my own apartment. He had his own apartment. Um, and we both were working. And we had, when we first started dating, we had uh, our text was, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on un unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. And we felt like God directed our paths all the way through the whole, through our whole story. Mm -hmm. So we got married in Troy, Michigan at the Troy Seventh Adventist Church. Um, maybe go to our next slide. This is my favorite picture uh, where we are getting married. Um, so pros and cons about getting married young. Um, I think because we were so young that what was, what was neat about our relationship uh, as, as a young couple was that we were able to kind of like mold each other because we were still like, we're still developing who we are, right? I mean, they say, uh, some people say that guys don't develop until like they're 25 fully. Uh, so I was yet to be fully developed. So she played a role in the last year of my life to make me who I am. So all the bad things in my life, uh, they're not my fault. Um, and and um, so part of it is we get to shape who we are. Um, we're, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of energy to live life together, to explore, to travel, to, uh, to work. Um, and so all of these different things, I think that there are things I valued um, as a young couple. Uh, we did quite a bit of traveling. We, we were able to work a lot together. Um, and we were able to enjoy a lot of life to, to its fullest. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, there are, like, so many challenges, right, just like with any relationship. Um, and I kind of feel like we didn't even talk about that in our dating, but, you know, definitely we had challenges. It's just being patient, working it out, having somebody you can talk to about it, being willing to forgive, you know, and just recognizing we're all growing. I think um, once we got married, one thing we had to really figure out was how we're going to like blend our cultures together. Um, and I think a lot of like conflict resolution work, uh, communication, obviously even finances, all of those things like we had to like explicitly talk about and we continue to explicitly talk about it. Um, you know, where it's like, okay, family meeting. And, um, and I think that the beauty of when you start a new family is you can actually create your own culture, right? Your own subculture. And that was something that is really exciting. Sometimes, you know, you have disagreements for sure. Like, oh, okay, well, I think we should do it this way. Well, I think we should do it this. Like, why do you keep forcing me to do that? When we, You know, and so I think just working through a lot of those things is kind of part of the journey. And maybe it was even more, um, more the case because, you know, both of us are very, like, independent-driven type personalities. And so I think with that, you know, there are so many strengths to that because when we actually agree on something, it's, like, amazing. But then when we don't, it's, like, World War III. <laughs> so, so, yeah, just working through all those things. So we had, we were uh, two different cultures, two different upbringings. Um, uh, we were very young. So there was, like, like Judy said, there was a lot of, we had, we've, we've had to work through a lot of things. I often um, uh, tell people, you know, that when, when, everything, when everything was great, is great between us, it's like a, it's like a rom romantic uh, comedy, you know. It's like a romantic story, movie. You know, she tries to make me a better person, but then I'm rescuing her from her life of being, like, you know, uh, strict and bound by all of these social constructions. Uh, and we rescue each other, and we like we're madly in love, right? But then when we disagree, it is like, you know, the world is falling apart. I mean, there's no, we have no like neutral disagreements where it's like where where it's not intense. Our disagreements are super duper duper intense. And so because of our personalities, because of our age, because of our culture, we had uh, even though we got married very young, we had a lot of things to work out, and we continue to work those things out. 
Um, and, and I think that for us, it worked out that we were young because we were able to um, invest a lot of energy into our relationship at an early stage while we still had like the, um, the, the, the mental fortitude to do that. Um, and by the grace of God, I think, you know, um, you know, we celebrate 20 years and uh, every, every day I love my wife more and more. I think one thing that I wanted to mention was like we took personality tests several times like throughout our relationship and we were like polar opposite polar opposite like in the Myers-Briggs you know and um, but then the as we kind of keep taking it we slowly start like merging a little bit closer to each other and so it kind of just shows how you know, like I feel like um, being married to Israel has opened up this whole new side of like a way of thinking and a way of being and a way of living that I would have never known, right? Being isolated and, and with my upbringing. And so the beautiful thing about marriage is it opens up, like you have to be open to understanding um, and to embracing um, a, new, a new and different way of life and adopting um, a new subculture together, so. And the beauty, I think the beauty of our situation of being married, uh, bringing together two different cultures is that when we got married, we decided to create our own separate culture. Um, we, we embraced uh, elements of the Korean culture, the Mexican culture, and we were able to fuse these things together and create kind of like a, 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 a family that we value where we bring in things from each side and we've tried to be intentional to bring that into um, the lives of our of our sons, and we hope that that's something that they carry on uh, when they when they have uh, when they have families. So I think that's it. It's uh, about eight thirty now. Thank you for listening. Yeah, this is my math. One plus one equals one. Uh, two different cultures. You bring them together, and God does something special, and He makes something new and different. All right. For those of you who don't know, that is a traditional Mexican outfit that I'm wearing and a traditional Korean one that Judy is wearing. All right, I don't know what we do here. Do we have, all right, any questions that you'd like us to answer? If not, we can end with prayer. But Also, Stephanie um, Ackenberger, Mrs. Ackenberger, was one of our like closest friends from the whole our whole, like, um, right, you know? From the beginning. From the beginning, yeah. Yeah. Before pre-marriage, marriage, kids, so. Yes? You guys are friends with my mom. Are we friends with your mom? Yeah. Yes. No, we I are. I don't think we've, we... Yes, we're friends with everybody. Yeah. Oh, Israel yeah. was... Israel, yeah. yeah. No, we were... We, we, we knew your mom, that's right, when we were in college, right? Yeah, 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 through campus ministry. That's right. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes. All right. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, yes. I don't know if I'm part of it, but how do you guys get together? Oh, yeah, no, because we're going for a walk. We're planning to meet for the walk because I was like, I think we need to talk about our situation. And this was like, let's go for a, for a walk. And I don't know, he knew there was a cemetery there, and he likes cemeteries. Guys, that's what I'm saying. I was like, who is this guy? But then I was like, okay, so we walked there. He likes cemeteries because he's like very introverted and he likes quiet places. So. I did not know there was a cemetery there. It just goes to show how the Lord was on my side. <laughs> Gave me a cemetery, like the ideal situation. Yeah, we just happened to fall. We just happened to land at a cemetery. And... Uh, Yes, way in the back. Oh, the proposal story. Oh, man. The proposal story is very long and complicated. I don't know if we have time. It is, it is, yeah. Maybe we'll have to save that for a different well, time. I'll, I'll just, I can just say, I think um, we had a very unique proposal story, and we had gotten into a huge fight, and <laughs> it just sounds so bad when you say it. It was her fault. It, it, was, it was a huge, huge fight. Like, it was like a pivotal moment. And Israel had decided 
that that was the time that he wanted to ask me to marry him because he felt like if there, if there was ever a time, he wanted me to be absolutely sure. It was when we were at our worst. So when we were in a huge fight, he came over and he ended up proposing to me. And um, so, yeah, that's the short version. But, yeah, that's... I had something else planned. But, <laughs> you know, you got to take advantage of the situation. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Any other questions? It's like so bright here, so I can't really see. I think we're, is that it? Uh, oh, question. Okay, question, yeah. <clears throat> How did it make you feel when like your other guy friends were hanging out with her, even though you guys said like, you know, like you hang out with your friends and stuff? Or like you were seeing somewhere else? I was confident. I was not afraid. What, what did he say? What did he say? Uh, how did I feel when you talked to other guys, right? How did I feel oh, when? Yeah, yeah, no, listen. No worries. Yeah, I really Did you feel see the like... picture of me when I was up there? <laughs> <laughs> Let's put the picture back. <laughs> he needs a reminder. No, you know, let me tell you something. I think when you have the maturity and when, you're, when, you, when you know you have like a connection and a relationship, you know, and you you want to put God first, and you understand the situations that you're in. Like sometimes it's like the temptation and the desire is like, oh, I just want to be with Him all the time, and I only want to talk to Him, and I can't wait to be with Him. And blah 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 blah. But you know, there's a ministry to be done still, right? You have friends. You want to maintain those friendships. You don't want to isolate yourself. And so we knew that our friends were so precious, and you know, so we just we could be we wanted everyone to feel comfortable. That's that's. I'm not saying that that's what everyone has to do, but definitely um, we, we had our moments of jealousy, maybe, but it was not because of day-to-day -day social hanging out and, and doing those types of things. Yeah. Cultural differences that we had to work. Do you have any? Mm, let's see. I mean, I think it probably came more into play after we had children. I would say having kids, you know, maybe like discipline, expectations of the kids. That's when we really had to sit down. Or, yeah, that's when we really had to sit down and, like, talk it out. That's why, you know, you have to really be able to talk to your person, guys. You know, a lot of conversations and breaking down, like, what did you do growing up? What did I do growing up? Okay, you know, like, what? I think, um, I think the one that I can remember the most is... When we uh, when we got married, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. when we got married, how how you demonstrate um, how you demonstrate like respect can be important to both cultures, but very very different. So he's talking about at our wedding. Yeah. At the wedding, yeah. And so uh, and so when we got married in in the Korean culture, you bow to show respect, um, and that was that was difficult for me because in my mind I thought you know I've never I've never showed this kind of respect even to my own family. And so what would that, in, in Mexico, um, family is very, very, very important. And so if you, if I were to disrespect any of you, it would be like me disrespecting your parents. Uh, and, and so the whole family is disrespected. And so those were kind of issues like, you know, um, we were wrestling through the expectation of how we demonstrate respect to each other while not compromising the other culture. And, and so that was one thing that comes yeah. to mind. And even along with that, like in the Korean culture, when you marry someone, okay, it's like different expectations of what you call the other person's parents, right? So in the Korean culture, when you get married, you call your um, spouse's parents like a more honorific version of mother and father. It's like an elevated mother and father, okay? For Mexicans, you never call anyone else mother and father. Like, you don't, you, you know? So it was weird, like, what do I call your mom? Okay, and so we love, I love my mother-in-law so much. I was calling her Mrs. Ramos, guys, until, like, the kids were born. Because I did not know even what to call her. I felt like I had to, and my parents are like, you call her Mrs. Ramos? Like, you should be calling her, like, mother? I'm like, it doesn't translate to mother. Like, I can't, you know? So we had to have this whole, and I would even tell her, and Israel, he should be calling my parents by the honorific form of, mother and father, but it's like, he's like, I'm not calling anybody mom or, like, it's weird for him to call somebody else mom or dad, because he's like, 
I only got one mom and dad, you know? So that was kind of something we had to really talk out and understand about our cultures. So a lot of it had to do with our extended family expectations. Um, so yeah. And we worked those things out yeah. Um, yeah. over time. But, but even, af even actually after we got married, it was it, like I didn't start calling her, her parents mom and dad until I think, uh, you know, four or five years into our marriage. Yeah, some things just took time, and, and we just had to be patient with one another because I'm like, I don't want to make you do something you feel uncomfortable doing, you know. And I didn't want to call his mom, like, mom when, you know, he feels like that's not what happens in my culture. So, but then we had kids, and we were able to call her, like, abuela. So I'm like, phew. So I just call her Lala, <laughs> you know. Like, it was just like that even helped having the kids. We just started calling them grandma and grandpa in Korean and Spanish. Like, we just went there. So one thing that was very important for us throughout the whole situation is to like remain authentic to who we were and also to to our to our uh, parents. And so uh, working, becoming close to Judy's parents for me took some time. It was it didn't happen as immediate as it would have happened were we the same culture. But I feel like uh, I'm closer to our parents now than I ever would have been under other circumstances, yeah. like even if I was Korean. And so it took some time, but I think um, we are in a, in, a, in a better place than I think we ever would have been. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you fight for something, uh, it makes, it, it, it makes the, out, the end result much sweeter, right? Mm -hmm. One more question. All right, I think we have no more questions. One in the front here. I guess, um, how did you know uh, that this was like the right one, you know? That's a good question. I think for me it was like, I did not know right away. You know, I think it's different for different people. And for me, it took, I tend to be more of a logical person. So a lot of things had to fall into place. You know, I am like less emotional. So for me, it was not like a feeling that I ever got, got. Even though I loved Israel a lot, I was very attracted to him. I was very worried about, you know, how the future would look. And I wanted to make sure all these things were set. Um, and so, but when everything fell into place, it was very, like, I had the peace. I was like, this is it. There's no one else, you know. But it took me, like, four years, so. I think for me, there was, like, um, obviously, there's the attraction, you know. You're attracted to this person. Uh, you can be attracted to, like, many, many different people. Uh, so I think attraction is not the only factor that will ultimately determine who you give yourself to. Because um, marriage is, you're, you're, you know, love, you're surrendering yourself, your rights to another person. And so for me, that the clarity came to me when I realized that um, out of all the people in my life, uh, I had found someone that could really make me a better person as because I was studying for the ministry, make me a better person as a minister, and then also um, strengthen my ministry rather than distract me for it, right? You can have a person that you're very, very attracted to that can pull you away from the, 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 the calling that God has on your life. And I thought that rather than doing that, she pushed me towards that. And so I think that's what ultimately gave me clarity in my mind as to her being the one for me. And I never wanted to marry a pastor, guys, but, you know, it happened. So I am an undercover physician. I am an undercover physician. So, you, you know, that took a lot of time and openness. But, yeah. God is good. If you surrender yourself to him every day, guys, there's nothing to worry about. Don't worry. You know what I mean? You do not have to worry about, oh, what if I never find someone, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, God has a plan for you. And the plan for, like, 99.999% of people is you'll find someone and you'll get married. I don't believe there's only one person in the world, and it's like if you miss them, oh, well, too bad. Like, you know, you, like you missed the, the boat. That was the person. I think there are many people, as long as you're both surrendered to the Lord and you're willing to work it out. Um, like I said, we had very different personalities, but God brought us together, and I think that has enriched 
uh, my life so much, marrying someone who's so different from me. It has opened up a whole nother side and, um, of understanding and knowing. And, um, and so that's the beauty that a relationship and marriage can bring. Thank you for having us. Yep. Do we close with prayer? All right, let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for uh, the gift of love that you've given to us to make our lives better, to give us a foretaste of heaven, and to remind us of the kind of love that you want to have, that you have toward us. I pray that you would uh, bless every young person here, the relationships that they are in or will be in. Most importantly, we pray, Father, that you would come soon and that you would find us faithful to be with you in heaven forever. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, freshmen are dismissed. <laughs>